All right, so we're going to be getting going with a tutorial on how to use vertex and curve vertex to create any kind of shape that you want. Uh, this will allow you to make kind of globular organic shapes with curved edges or polygons with as many sides as you need for whatever you're creating. So I just got started here. I'm in the editor of p5js.org and um, I retitled my piece Curve uh, Vertex and Curve Vertex and I, I saved it already so it is now in auto save. So you want to remember to do those things when you get started. And um, with the assignment here, there is an attachment of some starter code and I, um, I have that there as a reference for you. I do think it's a good idea for you to go into that starter code and take these two lines, just take these two lines at the bottom here. This is the lines that you could even take it with the notes there. Um, these are the mouse coordinate tracker, which ends up being really uh, helpful as you are trying to plot out your design. I also changed it from the default 400-400 for this canvas to 600-600. And so you can see it's a larger space than it automatically starts with. So if I go ahead and run that code, I can now see that it has the, the, the coordinate tracker. It's showing me uh, what the coordinates are of this mouse, which is going to be really useful information as I plot out my shapes. So to get started here, I'm going to uh, begin with making um, some kind of shape using vertex. Um, so uh, given that we're going to be doing a project soon where we make a landscape, I'm going to do something that works with a horizon line. So, you know, something that you could use if you are maybe making a cityscape or something, or mountains in the background. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll experiment with that. So to begin with creating a shape with vertex, you write in begin shape, and then there's some uh, empty parentheses, and then go on to the next line. And then you have vertex, and the parameters, the two numbers that you're going to be adding after vertex, are for the x and y location. So we get to use the number straight out of the um, mouse coordinate tracker. Um, to plug into the vertex. I recommend at this point just copying the vertex since we're going to be repeating that a lot for all the different points. So let's say I want like a zigzaggy kind of line here. So um, I'll look here and I'm seeing that uh, maybe I'll put my first point at 0, 0,400 for a low point in my kind of zigzag. Let's say I'm making some jagged mountains in the background. And then I'm going to the next line. I'm pasting the vertex that I copied. Now I'm going over. I can see my next one, maybe 140, 300 roughly. You can you just kind of, um, you know, estimate or round it up. 140, 300, I think I said. And go on to the next line, pasting that again. And so I'll have it go down to make sort of a zigzag thing going on. Um, so maybe this time I'll have it be um, 280, 400. Oops, that's a period, not a comma. And so that was a 280, 400 roughly. And now going back up to uh, 425, 300. and I'll finish it off at the end. So it's at the end, it's 600 wide, so that's going to be an X of 600 and then um, a Y of say 400. So that'll be 600. Oops. Okay, let's fix that. 600, 400. All right. So now to close out this shape, I'm going to um, add an end shape. All right, so let's just take a look at it now. So 
the fill, even though this red fill is at the bottom, since it's the only fill that is included in it, it's actually going to impact what came before it. So I'm going to give it its own fill color. Um, for now, I'll just make it blue. RBG. So I'm just going to put the full powered blue with the 255 for the third parameter. So now I've got blue. If I wanted these mountains to fill the whole bottom of it, then I would also need to add a beginning point in the bottom left corner and an ending point in the bottom right corner. So I'm going to add that into this so it extends it and gives it more of that kind of a landscape feeling. So I'm going to be adding in a new vertex here, which I still have in the copy and paste. And I'm going to be adding in a point in the bottom left hand corner, which means that it has a zero of the X and a 600 of zero of the X and a 600 of the Y. And then here for the bottom right, that's going to be the maximum of both the X and the Y. So that is a 600 for the X and a 600 for the Y. So now if I run this code, oops, I didn't mean to put it inside the end shape. Let me fix that. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so now it, let's take a look at this. Okay, so now it's filling up that whole bottom shape. So this is something that you could keep in mind as we move on to the Halftone Landscape project next. Um, and I'm just going to write some quick notes here about what this one is doing. So I'll say um, maybe uh, Blue Mountains. All right. So next, I'm going to create something with Curve Vertex. And this is just going to be something kind of abstract that overlaps on top of it. Uh, and also remember that the default here is a, uh, a black outline around everything. There's a thin black outline that you can kind of see on the edge there if you're, if you're able to look close. Um, so if I wanted to get rid of that, I could put no stroke. So now that got rid of that little black outline and I can bring it back whenever I want. I can say what color I want the stroke to be and how thick I want those lines to be. So I'm going to be creating one now that is going to be sort of a blob shape on top, layered on top of this using curve vertex. So it's a, a lot of it's the same process. So I'm going to say begin shape. And now I'm going to go into curve vertex. And I'm just going to give it several points here. And there's going to be some strange things we need to look out for. I'll point out in a moment. So maybe I'll have one point be 150, 125. Notice I'm still rounding. And again, I'll just copy the line here. So this is a good time to point out the sort of strange quality that we have with curve vertex is that the beginning, the first and last line of the curve vertex need to be um, duplicated in order for us to see those points. If we don't duplicate it, then the, those points kind of disappear. Um, so I'm going to leave this here, this doubled one on the first line. But as I go forward, I'm going to just delete the insides and I'll just copy this again so that it's, when I copy and paste it, it's blank. Um, all right. so. So that was my first one, and I think I'll give this maybe four points or something like that. We'll do 375, um, well, let's do 400, 400, 150 for this next one. What was, was that? Yeah, 400, 150. All right, and then copying and pasting the next line, and three... 17440. Let's give it another line. And maybe 60, 260. 
and then I think I'll just have it go around and bring it around to the front again, which I mean to the beginning, which I'll copy and paste this one twice at the bottom and we'll see what kind of effect that gives us. And I'm going to close it with N shape. Notice that it's, it's copied both at the beginning and the end. So end shape. And these are already ending and starting in the same place, but, um, but another thing to keep in mind is when you want the shape to close in on itself and, and connect back to the first point, you're going to write in close inside of there. I didn't do that last time, um, but this will help it to connect back to itself. It didn't really matter so much at the bottom there because I didn't need to have the line connecting it. But if you're doing something where you have an outline and you want it to connect back to itself, then it's important that you write in close. So, um, so now I can take a look to see. So it's making this kind of blob shape here. And, um, and it's currently the same color. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another fill. This fill, I will make it yellow, which means I have the red and the green on and zero for the blue. So that'll allow us to see this is a different color. So what I would like to do here is actually make it so that it is not filled in, that it's just a, uh, a loop um, that you can see through. So instead of doing a fill, I'm going to change it to be a stroke. And I'm going to give that yellow color that I made here into the stroke. And we can take a quick look at that. Right, it's a really subtle line right now. Um, and it has the fill still from before. So I'm going to say no fill. And now it's just that yellow line. And I want the line to be thicker, so that is using the stroke weight function and I'll give it maybe a fill of like eight or something we'll see what that looks like all right so now we can see that it's it's a thicker line maybe I'll give it a even bigger one maybe 15 all right so you can see here that the fill also applied itself to my um, mouse coordinate tracker if that's problematic then you can take um, this, uh, actually no, the stroke is what applied itself, not the fill. Um, you could give a no stroke on top of the mouse coordinate tracker at the bottom and now it doesn't have that anymore. So here is a curved vertex on top of a regular vertex and the requirements for this project have that you um, are creating at least three of them. So I would go on to do one additional one that's overlapping on top of this in order to fulfill those requirements. So I've been using the curve vertex, I've been using uh, the regular vertex, and also requirements are that they have different uh, stroke, uh, fill, no fill, right? You're, you're using this as an opportunity to remember stuff like about stacking order and how to um, control both the color and the thickness of the outlines as well as how to change the colors of these shapes. So um, I'm going to be going on to create uh, one additional overlapping one, either with uh, your curved vertex or with the regular vertex um, to, to get some practice with this to help prepare us for the next project. But I'm going to go ahead and end the tutorial here. Uh, but remember that you want to look through the requirements of the project um, and just make sure that you have it all. But basically what I would need to do is add in one additional shape here with either curved vertex or regular vertex. So just, just showing these real quick. Remembering to include oops, uh, different fill, stroke, and stroke weight. And that you have it at least 600 by 600 and you're making three different irregular shapes. All right. Good luck.